Hello, I'm Bas and I'm talking about Ashes of Creation today. Ashes of Creation is a high fantasy MMO currently in the alpha phase and it's created by Intrepid Studios founded by Stephen Sharif. On May 2nd, 2017, Intrepid started a Kickstarter campaign for Ashes with a 750,000 funding goal. The campaign concluded on June the 3rd, 2007 with 19,576 backers who raised 3,271,809 US dollars. Interestingly, the project was already funded by Stephen Sharif himself and the Kickstarter goal. Sharif and Intrepid mentioned that the project is primarily self-funded and that they are dedicated to stay true to their vision without being compromised. The core product can be delivered with our current capital and the crowdfunding goal. Going forward, we are dedicated to keeping our vision consistent with our philosophies and adding features whenever possible. Design Pillars In designing Ashes of Creation, we adhere every detail to five main pillars. Engaging and immersive story, a reactive world, player interaction, player agency, and risk versus reward. Even in the environment, everything you as a player do will tie into these pillars, while everything your guild does, everything your server does, will ultimately keep the world fresh, ever-changing, and most importantly, exciting. Engaging and immersive story and reactive world. Questlines can be personal, cultural, or regional. The game will set a lot of focus on quests to make the story immersive and let you make decisions to shape your surrounding world. You will change the world a lot. So if you choose to help a node grow, you are part of the change of the environment, of quests emerging and can then deal with threats that come up. But you could also not choose to engage in this node and maybe nothing of the stuff mentioned earlier will happen. It goes that far that maybe even a giant dragon may attack the city and it's people who dare to wake him building a city in his backyard. Player Interaction we decided to focus on mechanics that bring the idea of community to the forefront. To get people to interact with each other meaningfully. Not just to conquer a raid boss or to get some coin from a faceless auction house. But to maybe save a city. A city that all the local residents had a stake in. A city that the player had spent weeks or months developing. The defense of the city, the attack on the city or building a world together as a community choosing your own fate, River Friends. We believe that's going to be a story far more memorable and far more meaningful for players than just about anything we can come up with. We will have a lot of content that is available, but those will be behind doors that are accessible through agency on behalf of the community. In the traditional sense, no, we are not theme park. However, we will probably have more content than a theme park does. Traditionally, just because in order for those choices to be meaningful, there must be meaningful content behind the door you choose. Risk versus Reward the risk versus reward relationship will say, for instance, you've dedicated time towards building a node and other players have dedicated that equivalent time towards sieging the node. There's going to be a pitched battle between those players. They spend that time doing this because they are passionately about having access to that content. Another example is that there is no auction house and you have to send your wares with a small caravan to another city to sell your stuff. Around that card that you are traveling with is a PvP zone that moves with the card. That way other people could steal your stuff. You have to prevent them from taking your things and that way spontaneous PvP will happen. I personally can see a lot of fun with this mechanic. Nodes Ashes gameplay will heavily focus on the node system. Nodes are preset points in the world and can be described as a zone of influence. When players are in the area and quest, kill, harvest, explore, basically play the game, the node will earn XP passively and grow. This will change the view of the land. A campsite will appear with further quests and NPCs. The node system is based on the player's actions and will grow or vanish. It can even evolve to a metropolis. Housing will be a thing and a node will shape the area around it. There will be four types of nodes. Divine nodes. They specialize in skill, equipment, augment and have mostly priests as NPCs. Economic nodes. The focus lies on trade and merchants. Military node focuses on combat and class training with a lot of guards as NPCs. Scientific nodes focus on artisan and construction with many scholars as NPCs. Ashes of Creation allows you, the player, to decide the fate of the world around you. With each node type, you can change the flow of resources and goods in the world. Will you grow the largest economic metropolis and help guide the riches of Vera, or will you choose another path unlocking new stories filled with allies and enemies? Combat Combat will be the most tactile system in the game. We want the combat to be engaging, fun. We want to be able to really delve into that development so that we can better understand how to merge tap and action together in the same game because they are vastly different playstyles. Races. There will be 9 races playable in the game who have a parent race that splits up into two different variants. The Ayla humans split up to Kayla and Veilun. The Dunsical dwarfs split into Dunir and Ikua. The Kaibek orcs into Renkai 
and Vec. Brian Elves into Empyrean and Piray. The Night Rays are the tool now. Classes. Ashes will have 8 archetypes and at some point, currently around level 25, you will be able to choose an archetype a second time to merge your character into the final class. The combination of primary and secondary archetype is referred to as class. Players are then able to augment their primary skill with effects of their secondary class. You will not be able to change your primary class, but you will be able to change the secondary class, but not on the fly. Classes will have a primary tree and a secondary tree, and each primary skill will have several augment options from the secondary tree. This is an example of horizontal progression. If a fighter were to choose a mage as a secondary archetype, the fighter would become a spell sword. The combination opens up augments that can be applied to skills in the primary skill tree. Fighters have a rush skill that allows them to rush towards the target. And upon reaching the target, deal an amount of damage with a chance to knock the target down. A blink augment could be applied to the rush skill, which would now teleport the player to the target, thus eliminating the charge time on the skill. Rolls. The traditional trinity of tank, DPS and support will be in Ashes of Creation. Players should not feel branded by their primary archetype. Skill augments available through the class system allow characters to be personalized outside their primary role. And of course it is possible to double down on your choice to strengthen your primary role. We have our 8 base archetypes and the trinity is pretty strong influence with regards to the 8 base classes. However, the area in which we actually begin to play with that line between the trinity is in the secondary classes that you can pick. That's where we begin to blend those spaces and allow people a little bit of influence over their role and whether or not they fit perfectly with a particular category with the Trinity. Reactive World Ashes of Creation will be a living, breathing, reactive world. Your actions will shape the zone of influence, leveling nodes to form massive cities and create the story of the world that everyone experiences. We will have a lot of content that is available, but those will be behind doors that are accessible through agencies on behalf of the community. In a traditional sense, no, we are not a theme park, however, we will probably have more content than a theme park does traditionally. Just because in order for those choices to be meaningful, there must be meaningful content behind the door you choose. Payment Model Ashes will have a subscription model without an initial box cost. The monthly cost will be $14.99 US dollar. Add-ons. My decision is not to allow DPS meters nor add-ons. I feel we have an adequate measure in place to prevent a majority of potential third-party trackers. I know this subject has passionate voices on both sides and I respect the various opinions and positions many of you have expressed. We will be providing combat data for individual players in their chat window that players can filter and analyze for themselves. The goal is to mitigate and make the practice less prevalent through the ease that DPS meters provide. Also to place actionable enforcement for players who attempt to circumvent the decision by use of third-party programs, for which we will be monitoring. So this is my first video on the topic of Ashes of Creation and I will be going into more detail and more stuff in the future videos. If you like my summary, please like and subscribe for more content, Ashes-wise and for other games. Ashes hooked me from the start. I backed it on Kickstarter and I follow the monthly Twitch stream from the devs. Especially Steven Sharif makes me believe in this game. Whenever he talks about the game or gaming in general, I have a feeling that I can relate to him as a gamer. And since Ashes has no publisher breathing down their neck, I really look forward to be able to play this game. I will be able to take my first look in the beta and hope we get to see that in the end of the year, but probably next year. I also have some topics I will be talking about on what concerns me about the game in a future video. Stay tuned and thank you for watching.